Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 89. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop, located here in Rhode Island. They have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stoogie Geeks listeners enjoy a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking on the HTC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And buy Ocean State Cigars. Try the J. Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shade Silk and the limited edition J. Grotto Reserva lines. Visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com for a full list of retailers near you. Welcome, everyone, to this very special edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Very pleased to be here this evening. I'm joined by the illustrious crew here at Stogie Geeks in the Stogie Geek Studios. To my right, Mr. Mark Jr. Back in the saddle. I'm happy to be here. Sporting his new hack naked shirt, which uh, fits you really well. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very, uh, very impressed. Yeah, huh? Makes I just need to get on hacking naked, you know what I'm saying? There you go. Just we'll, we'll teach you how to do that. biceps and watch it dance. <laughs> 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 Mr. Stogie Santa's in the house. Good evening, everybody. And on the lines via Skype, Mr. Will Cooper. Greetings, everybody. So, um, Will, thank you for joining us uh, on Skype. We also, we also have our very special guest uh, on via Skype. And um, we just received the cigars to smoke for this show, which uh, already we've, we've lit up and, and are enjoying. Uh, it, it seems to we're going to learn a lot more about them. Um, but uh, very good on the start. Uh, I appreciated smoking a stronger cigars. I haven't, as Mark Jr. was saying before the show, I haven't been smoking a lot of really strong cigars. Uh, I'm reading in my notes that this is a Nicaraguan Puro. Um, but Eric Espinoza has joined us to tell us more about this cigar and uh, all about uh, Espinoza cigars. Eric, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, so, Eric, uh, tell us about, uh, I guess, first start with the cigar that we're smoking as uh, it has no band on it and... I have very little information, but I want you to say the name for the first time on air and, and all that stuff. So, it's, it's all you. It's a sake bomb, 42 and a half, uh, by, uh, 42 by 4, uh, 40, 42 and a half by 4, I'm sorry. It's a sake bomb. The reason why it has no bands on them is because we just, yesterday, we sent the bands over to Nicaragua. Cigar has been, been made for like four months. It's just an extension of uh, La Bomba, um, you know. My son Anthony and Hector over here are, which I like to call the, the dream team, because uh, you know they always got my back, and I always get outvoted on the names of the cigars, you know. So uh, you know all of our La, La Bomba, they're all names of bombs, and um, we did our seven by seventy, we released it last year, and they came up with the name F bomb, and I got <laughs> outvoted, and uh, and in this one they called it the Saki bomb, small bomb, a small little cigar, and that's the name they came up. With. Sorry, Eric, we're having a... Uh, can you turn your volume up on your end a little bit? It seems like uh, your audio is coming in a little weak. Okay, hold on. Let me put oh, this yeah. over here. I'm yeah, sorry. there you go. Yeah, it sounded like you were far away from the mic. Can you hear it now? That's a, that's a little better. A little yeah, we're going we're gonna to turn it up a little on our end as well. We want to make sure people can hear you. Sorry, guys. No, don't no, worry. Take your time. My ears are not very big. Hey, we're just sitting here enjoying our cigars, so... Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. All right. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so, uh, Eric, was there anything else you wanted to say about this particular size? Now, is this, is this in stores now, or like you said, you're just working on this uh, cigar coming out? No, the cigars, is, they're not in stores yet. I just came back from Nicaragua three days ago. The production's done. All the cigars are made. Um, we're just waiting for the bands. Uh, we shipped them out yesterday, so they should have them in a week. Uh, 
you know, the cigars down in Nicaragua is one of the easier things to do. It's just all the logistics that goes along with it, you know. Um, getting the bands on time, the box is, you know, the, the, you know, to get everything down there. So the band should be down there in a week. Boxes should be done in two weeks, and uh, they should be in the stores, say, uh, within the month. Excellent, excellent. So, Eric, I want to kind of go back in history a little bit and uh, start at uh, the beginning of your career in the cigar industry. And what prompted you to get into the industry and start blending cigars? Uh, it's always been a, a passion of mine. I've been smoking cigars since uh, 17. Being uh, I was born in Cuba, my dad not only smokes cigars, he eats cigars. You know, he's one of the few guys that ever seen eat a cigar. Um, and my family used to grow tobacco in, uh, in Vega, and it's like the farmland out uh, close to Havana. And even though I came young to the United States, I was uh, three months old. Uh, it's always been a tradition in, in our family and our heritage. And uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't stand it because my dad would smoke cigars inside the house and drink that Cuban coffee and the combination of the vapors of the Cuban coffee and the smoke. I mean, I used to go to school smelling like an ashtray and because he smoked inside the house. And then one day I just picked it up when I was 16 years old. And um, I haven't put it down ever since, uh, you know, and uh, I got into business. I was hanging out with uh, one of my local tobacconists and uh, in came um, Christian Eroa, who had Camacho, who uh, uh, he hired me at the time. And within three months, I became a sales manager. And then I started uh, being an independent rep in Florida, selling out different uh, brands in Florida. And then I decided, you know, I wanted to have my own brand of cigars. And uh, Eddie Ortega, whom we're still friends, I want to clear that because a lot of people always ask me that question of him and I are still friends. And, and yes, we are. And uh, we got together and we formed the old brands. Then recently, like a year and a half, he went out to do his venture and uh, and we're doing ours over here. Now, the, the first venture uh, between you and Eddie was the 601 line, correct? No, actually, it was a... Uh, there was two prior to that. We had a, a brand. Uh, we did one called Rio and Vibe, and then um, and then we had one called uh, Series X. Uh, and then we got into some legal issues with that one, and we did the Rio and Vibe. And then 601 was our third uh, venture. It was the first brand that uh, Pepin made for us. Yeah, that was the, the the one of the cigars that we've smoked quite a bit of. I think here on the <laughs> the Stogie Geeks crew, uh, this is actually has somewhat of a, a legacy. Uh, the original 601 line, uh, Stogie Santa would bring them out of the back, you know, some that have been aged and uh, sitting around for a while. And uh, they were very much greatly enjoyed by a lot of people in the in the shop uh, That's for a long true. time. <laughs> Until Mark Jr. smoked them all. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> we, we. That, that's what happened. <laughs> uh, so tell us uh, a little bit about the original 601 line since, you know, there is such a history here um, in the local shop here in Rhode Island. Um, what was some of the different sizes and such in the 601 well, line and, and things like we that? We started off with the uh, red and uh, the black. The uh, red was a Habano wrapper. It was a medium body. Uh, well, back then it was full body. You know, right? Uh, you know, in today's times, it's, it's a medium body. Mm. Um, and then with the black, with the same blend as the red, with a Connecticut shade, and it started doing very well. But, uh, you know, a lot of the consumers, you know, a Connecticut shade that strong, you know, when you pick up a Connecticut shade, you don't expect it to be that strong. So a lot of people were telling me, wow, you know, this is way too strong for me. And uh, and then uh, we sort of like uh, eliminated the black and we created the, the first box press cigar uh, that we being made, which is the uh, the blue label, which is a beautiful uh, broad leaf wrapper, which I believe in, uh, in 06, we got the number six rated cigar of the year in uh, Cigar Aficionado. We were very proud of that. Yeah, those are the ones we were smoking a lot of. Was the was the original blue line? Oh right. yeah. And then, and then hey. we created the uh, no, school wrapper. We did the the green label. Mm -hmm. And now, just so people know, when they look at six hundred one today, that you don't have any involvement in the six hundred one line. No, I just want people to get confused. No, I own the six hundred one. The six hundred one is uh, it's we we own it here. Okay. So, so when people go buy six hundred one today, that's it, still it's through okay. us. Yes. Okay. Um. So, uh, Will, did you have more questions for, for Eric? Yeah, Eric, actually, in terms of that line, it was also, was there a 601 white? I believe I've had a 601 white as well. It, yeah, one. it's funny. We, we created the 601 for one, one reason, one reason only was for events. Because every time we did an event, somebody will, you know, people would ask you, can I have a, a mild cigar? 
you know, we didn't have anything to give him. So I asked the, the consumer, are you staying or are you going? Because, you know, if the guy was staying, I couldn't sell him one of my cigars, you know, because it was so, you know, medium to full. So we created the 601 uh, White. It was just a mild cigar. We basically did it just, just for events. Okay. So I, I knew I had one at one time. And and then you guys probably Wait, write. I'm sorry, Well, I had a question. So where does 601 okay. come from, Eric? The name. You know, actually, it, um, we went down to Nicaragua. It was June 1st. So you got to write it so so many times, uh, you know, through customs and all that. Mm. And June 1st, and they, they kept ringing the bell, June 1st, June 1st. And I kind of like the way it sounds, you know, uh, 601. So that, that's one of the reasons we went. The date we went nice. to Nicaragua, I and I was June 1st. Nice, nice. Sorry, we'll go ahead. No, that's okay, uh, Paul. So I guess right before you dissolved EO Brands, you guys launched an, another line called La Bamba. And it seems like since you formed Espinosa Cigars, you've put a lot of emphasis on the La Bamba line, and you've taken it in a couple of different directions. Tell us a little about the, the background in terms of the La Bamba line. What was the impetus of that? Well, um, you know, now with uh, social media, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, bloggers, they, you know, they, they wanted something more. You know, they wanted something that was even stronger. And, um, and I had an idea. We, we put a, a long wick on it, and La Bamba means bomb in Spanish. Um, and we said, let's make something that's real, real strong, put a wick on it, okay, and we call it La Bamba. And that's how the, that, that came about. And La Bamba right now, it's, it's, I think it's a staple of most of the retail shops for five, six years, and it's doing phenomenal. It really is. Uh, we got right now, we got uh, with the sake bomb, it's six skews on it, and it's doing very well on well the retail shop. Uh, Eric, now, um, retailers have had, I think, somewhat mixed success listening to social media. Uh, is that something, and then developing blends and brands based on the feedback, uh, is that something that you're still uh, engaged in and really, you know, being in tune with social media and kind of tuning your blends and, and different line extensions with what people are saying on social media? Well, Paul, I, I've done just about everything in, in this industry. I, I mean, I don't hate to sound arrogant. I mean, I, I don't know everything, but I have done everything. I've had my own retail shop. I've been an independent broker. I've been a... Uh, a sales manager uh, and now we have our own uh, factory so I kind of know what people like out there you know mm. even though this industry we go through some trends right you know like right now you got those big ring gauge cigars mm-hmm. which I don't smoke but they listen if the public smokes it hey, we will make them um, and uh, we, we ask you know like I said the, the, the team we have down here you know you know they're young so uh, i listen to them also you know i'm 47 years old but you know i don't think the way they do but listen if they have an idea i i listen to that you know uh, um you know we like to get different opinion from different people and and we're not corporate america here we're you know we're a small boutique brand we can make things happen we don't have to have our people call their people to make it happen we you know we make it happen we don't have a problem with that you know, but yes we do let's answer your question yes we listen to what people like we see what what's uh, you know the trends, even though every cigar store it, it sells different sizes. I mean, you go to some shops that they, they couldn't give away a Robusto, you know, and, and some shops that's the number one selling cigar. Right. Uh, yep. You know, depending on the weather of uh, where you guys are at, you know, it's cold. You might not have that, m- that long of a time to, to smoke a cigar. So maybe the, the smaller sizes sell a lot better up there. You know, when the weather breaks, when the weather changes, then people have more time to smoke. That's a good point. Absolutely. Yep, yep. Um, so, uh, tell us, uh, where did you come up with the name Sake Bomb? You got to ask Anthony and my son, <laughs> Hector, about that. I don't know <laughs> whether well, they came up with that name, you know? <laughs> you, know every t- you know, if you come late to work here, you have to take a shot, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, I'm trying to get these guys not to come in late. But for whatever reason, they come in late all the time just to take the shot, so. No, <laughs> no. Uh, you also, um, uh, I see in the notes here. You're coming out with a seven by seventy, or there's, is that already available? No, that's available. That's been available for for a long for since last year, and they called it the F bomb. Yeah, that's a great name. Um, how have you had to tweak the blends? I mean, you've got everything from a Corona size all the way up to a seven by seventy. I imagine that there's a lot of tweaking that you have to do between those blends. Oh yeah, there's a lot of tweaking because like the, the cigar you're smoking now, the uh, the sake bomb, you know, you can't put in the same type of uh, of tobacco that you put in the the F bomb. Uh, 
you, the percentages are, um, and you do have to play along with it. We, we changed this one a, a little bit, okay, just because the size is very hard to make, especially if you put a lot of Lijero, like the, uh, like, like the La Bamba has. It's a lot harder to make cigars. You don't see too many full, full body cigars in Corona sizes or Lanceros because uh, the Lijeros, you know, it's they don't fit it. into that. So you do have to tweak the, the blend mm -hmm. a lot. So we, you know, we smoked them. We made a bunch. We smoked them. And we brought them back to the states. A lot of people don't know that. You know, when you create blends in the Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican, wherever you're at, you can't just smoke them there because when you bring them back to the state, they taste differently. Now, I've asked that question to a lot of people in our industry, guys that have been around for many, many years, and no one's been able to answer me. You know, they say, "Well, the flight." Well, I ship by by by. You know, I ship sometimes by boat. Well, you know, by cargo. What? You know, that's not up in the air. You know, and um, no one's been able to answer that. And I did that test. I, I, uh, I made two cigars with the same roller, same tobacco, same everything. I smoked one in the airport in, in uh, Managua, and when I got off the plane in Miami, got in my car, smoked it, and it tastes different. Now I'm not telling you it's a big, big difference, but it does change uh, mm. a lot. So you know, when we create our blends, we create them in Nicaragua, but we smoke them in uh, in Miami after we let them rest for a while. We smoke them in Miami, and then we go with the one that we believe in. You know, Eric, it's interesting along those lines. I have kind of a, it's kind of a, a wacky question, but we were uh, talking here earlier, the, much before the show, and we noticed that when we first, first light a cigar, that the aroma that you get from lighting that yeah. cigar mm -hmm. is very, very different from the rest of the smoke. In fact, I, I lit up a cigar, and there are some other people here in the studio, and, and everyone that wasn't smoking said, wow, that smells really bad they didn't like the room aroma and because i had just lit it up now i got a little ways through the cigar and they said oh the room aroma is much better now and, and i also noticed that the the flavors are actually very different right when you first first light up a cigar those first few puffs are also very different and coupled with the room aroma is that what is the reasoning behind that can you give us some I, insight i i can tell you do you do you drink scotch you drink yes. uh, rum yeah what do you think both Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> if it's what brown, it goes down. <laughs> High, uh, Highland Park. Highland Park, okay. The first drink of Highland Park that you drink, it doesn't go down that smooth, correct? Yes. No, it's a good point. Yep. And the second one goes down a little bit smoother? Mm hmm The third one, you can drink it out of the bottle and it doesn't it doesn't bother you, mm -hmm. correct? Mm hmm You adapt. A lot of people adapt to the flavors. And the people standing next to you, you know, the first puff they get, okay, now they're... Believe it or not, they're also adapting to the to, to the smoke. Mm -hmm. So so, it, it's a matter of uh, uh, does a cigar change? Yes. Uh, does it change as much as uh, someone adapts? You know, you adapt a lot to to, to the cigars. No different than alcohol. It's like a sensory you know? situation. Yeah, it's saying. more of a sensory. That's a good point, Stogie Santa Ray. It's more of a sensory thing than it is the tobacco uh, changing or having presenting different flavors or smell or whatever, right? Yeah, Eric. Sure. Question yeah. I got for you with these seven seventies and, and six eighties coming out with different productions and whatnot, is that gonna cause a tobacco shortage down the road with using so much tobacco in those cigars? Well, it all depends what they're putting in it, you know, because you have shortage of tobacco now. It depends, yeah. you know, uh, what type of tobacco. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I know what mines is made out of, but I don't know some of these. I just think people want value. You know, you you get the. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and for me, I don't smoke those big cigars. No, I don't, I don't either. think you get the flavor of those big cigars that you nope. do with a smaller cigar. You know, but if you have a, one of those big cigars that costs, you know, I'll give you an example, you know, not including the taxes. You know, every state has different taxes, right. but my uh, F-bomb sells for a nine ninety five. okay? I don't know how you and, do it. And then you, you have a uh, 6 by 60 that, that sells for, uh, you know, 8 bucks, and then you have uh, a, a Toro that sells for, like, s 7 bucks. So you figure for $2 more... You get a seven by seven. Now, I don't get that. I really, I can't put such a big thing in, in my mouth like that. I don't know. Some people. No, I get TMJ. But uh, I mean, uh, you know, God bless them, though. I mean, I, again, if, if people are smoking them, we make them. Mm -hmm. But as far as short as this tobacco is, listen, uh, with money, you can buy anything. Uh, yeah, I, true. Good point. I just, if, I just if, don't get it. I, I can prices, see six. You know, they go up all the time, so you know, uh, I don't think there'll be a shortage of tobacco. Okay. No. Now, well, you had a question here about the La Bamba Warhead. It's one yes. of your favorites, you say, in fact. Yep. What was your question? I'm sorry. I think He's we, freezing. Yeah, I think we'll Skype froze up. It's not bad. It's good to keep him quiet. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yep. 
can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So I was gonna say uh, one of my personal favorites is is the war uh, the Bomba Warhead, and that one's really taken off. Um, so what you did with that one, from what I understand, you box pressed it and put a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper on that, correct? That's correct. And um, it was a limited production. So my big question is, are we gonna see more of it? Because it, it was truly a fantastic cigar. Well, um, we we got the cigars and. and and spurts, okay. Uh, we we made a it was limited. We made uh, two thousand boxes. Um, we practically sold them all at, at the show, um, and, and we got them in in, in spurt because uh, con, uh, the broadleaf Connecticut broadleaf uh, that's a hot wrapper, and there's a lot of people using that wrapper. So we we got like maybe uh, four shipments of, of five hundred. We recently got our last shipment in. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was like four days ago, and uh, and I'm trying to give everybody, you know. We sold another 2,000 boxes, and uh, we're not making it anymore. Uh, but we are doing a, a Warhead 2. It, it will be out at the show. Nice. Mm -hmm. And what was the motivation originally for box pressing that as opposed to just making it round? Was there any, any reason why you just ended up box pressing that? It, it, yeah, that's a great question. Um, some cigars just taste better when they're box pressed, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, you know, we make cigars round. We make cigars box pressed. Uh, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of box press. It's just it's just a real a pain in the butt to to, to make um, because uh, it goes back to like I was telling you guys percentages. You can't load up the the cigars with a lot of tobacco because it's something that, you know you gotta uh, you gotta press it together. So if you put a lot of tobacco, then that cigar is not gonna draw. Um, so you gotta put just the right amount of uh, of tobacco in it that you press it and then. Even if you if you don't put enough tobacco, then it's gonna burn hot. So you you gotta really you know what you're doing, you know, to make the those box press cigars. But it did taste it did taste better uh, box press and that particular size than it did round. So that that's the reason why we went with the box press. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And also, you just recently announced a another offshoot of the La Bamba uh, blend um, with uh, Smoke In, which is one of their micro blends called the Bunker Buster. Now, I know you don't want to kind of give away the farm, but is there anything you could tell us what's what's a little different about the Bunker Buster compared to some of um, the La Bamba line? Yeah, the Bunker Buster is uh, one of uh, Smoke In's uh, micro blends. Uh, I believe they have uh, five or six other ones. Uh, every year, uh, Abe, uh, who's the owner of Smoke In, he, um, he does a micro blend. Uh, I know he did one with uh, Pete. He, he did one with uh, Petorum. And I think uh, Matt Booth did one for him, and then uh, yep. and then uh, he approached us to, that he wanted to make one, and he had the name registered Bunker Buster, and so we called it 601 Bunker Buster, and it's a uh, it's also a box press, it's a perforito size. Uh, we um, we did like a small little uh, event at a Ruth Chris uh, right before his uh, big cigar event that he has, and uh, we handed out some five packs to some of his uh, consumers. And it went very, very well. It's a medium body cigar, okay? Um, and it's mostly all, all Nicaraguan. Um, and it, it's just a lot of flavors. Not that overpowering, it's just a cigar that's got a lot of lot of flavor. So it's a little bit of a dial back La Bamba, you you'd say. Yeah, it's not as it's not as strong as the La Bamba. Yeah, and I like the I like the um the the banding was really cool. It was kind of like a sergeant's insignia or something. It was really, really cool, that banding on that. That's, that all, guys... that, that's all Anthony here. I'll, I'll show you a box here if you want to see it. I yeah. don't know if you guys can Absolutely. see it. Absolutely. These, the, these were the five packs that we were handing. Lift it up, Lift Eric. it up, Eric. You know, we're at, Eric, bring it up. Go. Bring yeah, up the box. There you go. Right there. Perfect. There we go. Right there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Oh, too this, high. This is, this is all Anthony's uh, work. He's the one that does all these graphic stuff. I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> Bring it down a little, a little more, a little. More. Yeah, right, right there. There, yeah, you there, there you go. go. Hold there it right there. Go. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. You guys cool. are saying that because it's covering my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they tell me all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, th this is what the, the, this is what the five pack. I tell my like. wife the same thing. <laughs> 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 I heard that. <laughs> right. How are we gonna do? I love it. Right. So, so getting today. back to just one more question on the 601, I know we spent a lot of time on it, but 
Is there any other projects you may revisit around some of the other 601 blends? You've done a lot with La Bamba, but are, are there any other things maybe you're considering down the road, uh, maybe different sizes of the other ones? We're focusing more, Coop, on, uh, you know, the Espinosa. Um, you know, when we got we uh, got the La Zona factory, we opened up the factory uh, a year and a half. Um, we came out with the Espinosa and Espinosa Maduros, and we have the uh, La Zona. And we're focusing more on that right now. And uh, yeah, we, got them. Uh, we are going to relaunch the Muchelago, Muchelago, oh. or what have you. Uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be out in the show. Um, but we're mainly focusing on that, you know. I think La Bamba has got already enough sizes, you know. The 601 stands on its own, and uh, and we're focusing now on uh, on the Espinosa lines. Eric, can you uh, inform our listeners a little bit more about the Murcielago um, brand and blends? Yeah, the... the, the it was a brand that uh, we made, Eddie and I, and it was selling tremendously. But uh, it's a, a Mexican San Andre wrapper, and, and that wrapper was very hard to get. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the most sought out wrapper there is, and uh, it was very hard to get. And um, and I got uh, very little of it, but I, I would rather have done the Espinosa Maduro that we did. But now I just purchased a, a bunch of bales of it. So now we're ready to, you know, relaunch the uh, Michelle. It was a great uh, brand. It did phenomenal for us. It was just, uh, you know, like Mark said, is it going to be a shortage of tobacco? Well, you know, there's a lot of big company, major players out there that, that you know, they buy most of it. So mm-hmm. I got my hands on some. I, 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 you know, I met a guy at the show last year. We sat down, we talked, and, uh, and you know, I just bought uh, 40 bales of that. So uh, we're looking good with that. So was the Mercy Lago, was that the first San Andreas wrapper, or one of the first cigars to feature that wrapper? Um, no, there's there's a brand out there that that, that has it, and I, I, I you know, I no, rather not say what it is. Okay. But it was one. It, it was one of the it, first, right? It it, it it was one of the first. Yeah. Okay. I tell you what, we were the first to uh, promote it, which it was a mistake. The other company that doesn't promote it, they, now I know why they didn't because. You know, people are going to want it. So we were the, one of the first to promote it. Yes, Eddie and I were one of the first to promote it. Mm. Now, what drew that? What drew you to that rapper in the beginning? <clears throat> it, it's funny. It, it, it fell on it fell on our lap. There was these two Cuban guys growing in, in Mexico, and uh, he called me. Uh, they had a little shop in uh, in, uh, in Cape Coral in uh, in Florida, on the west coast of Florida, and and they were growing tobacco in Mexico, and they gave me a call. They said, hey, we're growing some tobacco. Why don't you buy some from us, blah, 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 and all this. So so we met halfway, and they showed me the tobacco, and, and you know, and, and that's uh, and I told them, how much do you have, and, and all this. Can I see the rest of it, and all that. And uh, and uh, and we went, we saw it, and and we bought it. Uh, Eddie and I bought a container of it. Mm-hmm. I just want to just interrupt a little bit. I want to go, go around the room here and see what we're thinking about this. Cigar we're smoking right now. I, I, I tell you what, I, I'm not the world's foremost expert on pairings, um, and admittedly, I like to drink scotch, which isn't necessarily the best drink to have with a cigar, but it's pairing very well with the cigar. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I think the, the kind of I don't know the simplistic view of it, right, is you get a strong cigar and it pairs uh, better to me with scotch, right? Scotch mm-hmm. is a very strong taste. And I think a stronger, uh, fuller-bodied cigar such as this one. Um, really is a is a nice pairing, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting some great flavors off this cigar, um, and it's progressing nicely. Mm-hmm. I love the strength in the pepper that I'm getting off of this cigar. Uh, I had mentioned it briefly before we started that uh, we're not seeing a lot of these strong cigars out here anymore. No. The trend yeah, the is gone more towards medium, yeah. well, they're, a they're, medium they're, to mild medium cigar, and mm-hmm. uh, it's a little refreshing to, to actually uh, – Remember, Smoke you, something you that's guys, kicking you your butt a little bit. You got the smallest state in the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, true. Well, yeah, but well, yeah, it's for sure the biggest egos though. to go with it. But yeah. it, it's. But well, I'll tell you what, the fermentation on this cigar is incredible. It's so smooth. It, it is. It's, it's, yes, that's, yes. that's yes. what I can. I, I was going to say it's not a cigar that's all about strength. And again, no, for our is, listeners, we're we're smoking the uh, uh, six hundred one La Bamba line, the Sake Bomb, which is a Corona sized. You guys, you guys are one of the first to smoke it. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Very good. I feel very good. Very honored. But I'll tell you something. This, this, uh, it, it, it's like I say, a little sm- the pepper on the, on the retro hell I get, but the smoothness. Uh, how, how it's a full body cigar, but extremely, extremely smooth. Mm. Soft yeah. on the palate, 
it, it, it's, it it's really well balanced. is. Uh, yeah. We, oh, we worked exactly. on it very hard. It's, it's well balanced. Again, like I told you guys, it's tough. You know, oh. we create blends down there in Nicaragua, but we got to smoke them down here. So we've been going back and forth for four or five months on this, and uh, I, I think we have a winner, you know. No doubt. Uh, I agree. It really is. It, I'm not just saying it because you, you're here. but So when are we going to – when are our listeners and us going to be able to start seeing these in shops there? I will tell you six weeks, uh, you know, six to seven weeks. The cigar's been done. The cigar's been sitting uh, for a while. And uh, are we waiting? Like I said, we sent the bands out there yesterday. By the time they clear customs and all that, you know, the boxes are, are, are being done. You know, the cigars are ready. So once the boxes are done – uh, you know, we, we put them in the same boxes of the, the, the Bomba. Um, you know, we don't paint our, uh, those boxes and not paint it. So, because when you do make uh, boxes that are painted, you got to leave them open for a while like that. You don't get the, uh, the, the you know, the taste no, of black thin or, yeah. or, or, yeah. or the, 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 the you know, taste, taste oh. of paint. So, it, they're ready to go. So, I would say six to seven weeks stops. So, Eric, there's a lot of, uh, of course, a lot of different uh, wrappers you can use on your cigars. Uh, are there any that uh, you've kind of played around with maybe that um, haven't worked out for you? And are there any that are kind of on your radar uh, for maybe an upcoming cigar? Well, Paul, if you really look at it, um, I, I, I tell that question to everybody. Um, there really isn't that many wrappers. I mean, there really isn't that many choices, you know. Um, you, you got different variations of a Havano. Havano is a lot of different variations, but mm -hmm. it's still Havano. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you might get some, some different flavors of a, of a say, an Oscuro or a, a Brazilian Havano or a, a Ecuadorian Havano, but, but it, it's still Havano, you know, and there's not that many different rappers. Um, so we try mostly, you know, we want to create a, a cigar, you know, of course, the, the, the first, you know, you have to go to is the rapper. Okay, what rapper do we we want to use. There's a couple more out there. That, the the uh, Brazilian rappers. You got your Arapiraca, um, You know, uh, like I said, Brazilian uh, Habano and all that. And we've been playing around a little bit with that. Um, but it, it's very hard. It's very hard. You know, we, we have to. You know, the, the binders and the fillers are the taste. Back in the days, um, people would tell you, "Oh, the rapper gives it 60, 70, 80 percent of the taste." I, I don't agree with that. I don't believe in that. Unless it's a Connecticut shade, because the Connecticut, I, I don't get much flavor off a Connecticut cigar, you know, and that might be a high percentage that, that gives you the flavor. But the, the combustion of the cigar, you know, how you, you know, even how you make it and uh, the strength level and does this binder go with these fillers and all that. And, and that's what we mainly, uh, you know, we put our, 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 our focus in. Because uh, not every uh, binder goes with, with every wrapper, you know. You got to mm. play along with it. It's, it's very hard. It's not easy. Yeah, I, I can imagine balancing uh, where the leaf comes from with the process that you have when you are fermenting it or, you know, to make a Maduro or whatever is. Uh, uh, and then balancing that with all the binder and filler is probably some of your challenges, right, as a blender. It, oh, yeah, that's that, that's our challenge. And remember one thing, like Mark said earlier, we got to create blends that we can get that tobacco. Because mm. if we create a blend and then there's there's... You know, I wouldn't say a shortage. There's these big monster companies that go out and, and buy them all. Them up. And then, you know, and then, and then we're screwed, you know. So that, that's one of the reasons uh, uh, Paul, Mark, and, and Coop, you know, a lot of people out here in our industry, they, they, they say they're blends and all that. And I don't know why, because the colonel never revealed there's 11 herbs and spices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <my God. laughs> But, but, you know, if you got something good going, you know, and, and, and you tell the people out there, then they're going to say, hey, you know, let's go get some of this tobacco. And then if right. you don't grow tobacco, which right now we, we're not, you know, maybe in the future we will, you know, it'll be tough to get that, that, that tobacco. So we don't like to, you know, to just put it out there, you know. Um, so your factory is the La Zona factory, is that correct? That's correct. So tell us a little bit about uh, the factory and, uh, well, you know, what's your average day look like in the factory? Wow. It, the, the factory is a, a beautiful colonial building. It's a three-story building in the, right in the heart of Esteli. It, it's got, in my opinion, the, the greatest view of the city. You know, if you, I stay at, the guys over at Drew Estate are real good friends of mine. They have a great view of, of, of a valley out there, not of the city, you know. I've had a lot of uh, big guys in our industry just go to my factory. It's very relaxing. 
the aura in that building is phenomenal. Um, you go up there, you got a beautiful veranda. Um, you can smoke a cigar and, and watch uh, a lot of people go by. It's a very cozy, uh, you know, we have 18 pairs uh, there right now. Um, we're trying to buy the building. The guy won't sell us the building, but uh, I don't think I will ever leave that place because it's very, very cozy. And everyone that goes by there, it's, uh, you know, they just fell in love with the building. And um, I, I just feel great in that building. You know, you walk into a place and, and, and you feel good about it. That's the way I feel when I go down there. And everyone tells me the same thing. It's a very, very cozy place. People go down there and they really don't want to leave, you know. But we treat everybody like family down there. And um, I, it's just a great, cozy place and making great cigars. Uh, so you're working on a project um, with Moya Ruiz Cigars? Did I say that right? Ruiz. Probably not. Ruiz. Ruiz. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. All right. Okay, you had it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, called the Nunchuck. Yeah. What can uh, can you share with us any information about that? Well, that, that's a brand that we do with them. For, we do for them. You know, that that's their brand. Um, Danny, who's the Moya and the Moya Ruiz, he was with me in the factory uh, uh, last week, uh, and uh, we were working on that. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, they announced it. They're posting it, so I guess I can uh, tell you a little bit about it. It's, uh, it, it's uh, two cigars in one. Uh, the cigars held together by... Uh, you know, every cigar is individually banded, but we put a, they, they put a big band holding both cigars, and it's got, instead of one wick, both of the wicks are attached to each other, and it actually does look like a nunchuck, and, uh, but it's been a pain, pain in my butt, you know, just <laughs> trying to get that wick not to break, uh, put them in the boxes, but they won't move around and all that, and I told them, you know, some of these are going to break, and then once these break, they're no longer a nunchuck. <laughs> But, but you know that's that's what they wanted to, to do and uh, I think we got the box down packed now and um, I don't know when it'll be you know it should be out in the stores maybe in uh, or on the show uh, you know in July but it's it's a real nice concept uh, um, and um, I don't know if one of them into martial arts or not but they, you know uh, I think I, I like the idea I thought it was real nice. It, it really does look like a nunchuck, guys. Um, and there's a picture actually on Cigar Coop that uh, Nelson was sent to me. Uh, folks want to look at that, and we'll put it in the show notes as well. Nice. Um, so what's your what's your take on uh, limited releases, Eric? You know, the, there's a lot of manufacturers that um, they all have seem to have a, a different strategy when it comes to limited releases. You know, some are kind of a one and done. Uh, limited release they only produce so many and then it never makes a reappearance you know there are others that uh, infrequently their limited releases will make a, a, an appearance uh, and then there are some that you know call it a limited release but generally it's it's more available than, than most other limited releases what's, what's your strategy on the, the limited cigars well Paul it, it goes back to the same question that I, going back I hate to be repetitious but you know sometimes you, you create these great blends and um you can no longer get that tobacco for various reasons. These monster companies either buy them all up or you can't get it anymore. So if you can't get it anymore, you know, then you can't make it anymore. And uh, But sometimes that tobacco reappears and then you say, hey, I got a little bit more. And then you do, the, you know, you make it reappear again. But it, it, it's not done intentionally. I don't think anybody, you know, any company is going to do a limited release. You know, most of the limited releases are because because of that tobacco, you know, you know that they put in there, whether it's one leaf, whether it's uh, the wrapper, the binder, the filler that you can't get, and then, you know, you don't want to create another cigar that that's not the same blend. So mm. that that's that's uh, the norm on the uh, on the limited edition cigars. I mean, do you feel you have to produce a limited release to stay stay competitive and have something that's limited and get people excited about it, or? Well, you know, it's a combination. I I, I mean, people want what they can't have. You know, people yeah. want the forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. You know. And I, I'm 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 one that's really against Cuban cigars, but you know a lot of people w want to get their hands on them. You know, uh, I'm a fan of Cuban tobacco. I'm not a fan of Cuban cigars, um, but a lot of people want them. You know, I remember growing up. I think I've said this several times. You know, living in Florida, uh, I don't think Mark Jr. there will remember this movie, but you remember Smokey and the Bandit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, I'm the old well, one. The, the, the Smoking the Bandit was based on uh, you couldn't get the coarse beer east right. of the Mississippi. So after that movie, you were allowed to get coarse beer in the east of the Mississippi. Now, 
Keep it over there. <laughs> yeah. who, 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 who the hell drinks Coors beer now? You know, uh, here in Florida. Well, I mean, maybe Coors Light, but you don't hardly don't see Coors beer anymore. The banquet everybody, beer. Everybody yeah. tried it, and yeah, you know, nobody wants it anymore. McDonald's beer. Mm. But at the time, everybody wanted it. Mm. Well, did you have uh, other questions for Eric? Um. Yeah. So, Eric, is there any new projects that you could share with us at this time? Um. We, we, you know, we're working on something, and, uh, and you know, we, we, we don't have the name on it yet because it's very hard to create names in this industry mm-hmm. that's not taken. Um, so true. You know, uh, um, so th- that's a tough challenge uh, for us. But, yeah, we are working on something new for the, for the show. Um, and, uh, you know, we finally got, we finally got the, the blend down. Um, and, you know, we're going to start production in, in a couple weeks. And... Um, and I know one thing, we're putting it in uh, cedar boxes, um, <laughs> you know, and just because I love the smell of cedar. Nice. So we're putting it, we're putting a little bit more higher end uh, boxes uh, just to have that aroma of it. And, um, you know, that's the only thing I can tell you now, because, you know, um, uh, that's all the information I have. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> you, you, you know, Eric, you could always Pay just... Pay attention to smoking <coughs> the bandit over here. You, you know, Eric, you could always just call it the Stogie Geek Cigar. We'd yeah, be happy to work with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Smokey that, and the Bandit cigar. That's another. That's another. The Smokey and the Bandit cigar. <laughs> oh, there you go. The Bandit. Do you feel pressure actually to put something out at the trade show, or or not? With the way things are in the industry these days. Well, you know, Coop, our industry is weird, man. It's a very weird industry. You can have a brand that's doing phenomenal, you know, without mentioning names. You know, I remember back in the, you know, back in the boom. You know, you had. Uh, you know, you had so many uh, brands that were doing phenomenal, you know, and they fell out of the face of the earth. I, I don't know why. You know, I'm sure these guys didn't change the blends. They didn't change anything, you know. There's brands that are hot, that, you know, they do phenomenal, and all of a sudden, you know, they slow down, you know. Um, you know, we're, we're one, you know, for example, us, you know, the 601 was doing phenomenal one time. You know, it slowed down, you know. Um, La Bamba did phenomenal and still doing great, you know. Um, we didn't change any of the blend. We didn't change anything. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast, you know. Um, we're not, we don't like to throw enough, enough stuff to, to see what sticks. We just like to, you know, we have great blends, you know, we want to share it with you guys. Mm-hmm. Very true. Eric, uh, uh, outside of your own brands, uh, what do you like to smoke? Listen, I have no egos, you know, and I, and I, and I teach that to all my guys here. I, I don't have a problem you know, our, our, our guys smoking, uh, 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 competitors, friends, all that cigars. Uh, you know, I, I like some of the stuff that Jewish States is putting out there. You know, we're friends, and uh, and you know, I, I like the feral pig that they did. Yeah, the, the feral, uh, the feral yeah, flying pig. I, I smoked one recently. It, it was had a little bit of age on it. It was fantastic. Fantastic. I I, I preferred the dirty rat until the feral pig came out, mm-hmm. and I'm a big fan of the feral pig. You know, and and I like Opus. You know, growing. Uh, you know, I when they're aged, I, they're yeah. aged. A lot of people will tell you, "Oh, it's a hype." It's just not. But I'm a big fan of, of the Opus. And I went. This came out with a, uh, I think it was Casa. Casa Fuente. Uh, Casa, Casa Fuente. Cuba. Casa, Casa Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. I thought that cigar was phenomenal. And and even the the David of the the Nicaburo, I think that yeah. cigar was is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, um. You know. Listen, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of a, a good cigar. It doesn't have to be a uh, full body, you know. I, I do get the flavors. I don't get wine. You know, it's, it's weird, you know. Uh, I was in uh, Napa Valley with my wife, and uh, and we went through five vineyards, and I was already messed up in the fifth one. And the guys <laughs> handed me, "Can you taste the meats? Can you taste this?" I said, "Buddy, I can taste the alcohol. I can't taste no meat or anything else." You know, I'm messed up to begin with. You know, I, I don't get wine, but I do get cigars. I do get tobacco, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and, and I and I do like those cigars that I mentioned, but we'll smoke anything over here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if we like that. it, we like it. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan, and I also like a Willie cigar, that uh, Herrera oh, cigar. I love oh, that short that Corona. Oh, you know. Now, er- Eric, is there other drinks that you pair it with, uh, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Yeah, whatever's free, whatever yeah. anybody gets me a bottle of, you know, <laughs> um, it, it pairs well with cigars. No, listen, I, I like. Full body cigars. I like the, the fuller uh, liqueurs. You know, I, I like if I'm gonna drink wine, I'll drink the, the uh, uh, cab. You know, I like B 
being Cuban, you know, we're, we're raised with Johnny Walker. You know, Johnny mm -hmm. Walker's big in the Cuban community. So, you know, I drink a lot of Johnny Walker. I love fat tire beer. I don't think you guys yeah. can get it in Polite. No, I was just in Florida, and I, I had some fat tire. It was really good. I hadn't it had it in a recently, while. It's, it's only been in Florida for like three months. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love uh, drinking that beer, and, uh, you know, and I love uh, Sacapa rum. But, you know, but I can only have one or two because it, it's too sweet for me. Mm -hmm. But be, yeah. being in yeah. Nicaragua, I drink a lot of Flor de Caña out there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, rum makes and, you dumb. Oh. And, and I, you know, and you can't forget the great goose of the world. You know? Oh, God. <laughs> with awesome. some tonic and lime, right? A vodka tonic? No, I'm a sissy. I got to drink it with uh, with cranberry. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hate putting anything in my liquor, but when it comes to vodka, it's got to be tonic. It's got to be something, yeah. <laughs> you got to mi mix You got to mix vodka. I, I, yeah, I know. You know. Hey, can't do it's it got no taste. Either. Yeah. <laughs> like gin, it, that's got to be the nastiest drink ever invented yeah. in mankind. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys like gin. I can't stand gin. No. I, I like it with some tonic and some lime when it's hot outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it right on the girl's belly button. That's why I like it. <laughs> that's the best kind. There's no yeah. bad gin if you drink it like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That's why I call it. That. I always say I like the navel gin. Yeah, yep. the navel gin. Yep. Got to like that. Uh, Eric, um... Are you willing to play five questions with Stogie Geeks? Bring it on. All right. All right. So these are just kind of five random questions. Uh, they have uh, probably absolutely nothing to do with cigars. So here we go. Three words to describe yourself. Three words to describe myself. Yes. Passionate, loyal, <laughs> ambitious. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? I was a serial killer. Well, uh, that's, uh, and, and, it's not something you think about. Right? I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you ask that question because I've asked it before. Um, I always watch uh, CSI and uh, mm. and I, I always like to see and um, you, you know and, and some of the stuff that people use to kill the people. I mean, you, you know, I, 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 it has to be a, a, a it has to be a revolver. A silencer that you don't want anyone to hear, you know. There you go. Fair if enough. you were to write a book about yourself, what would the title be? Wow, you guys are putting this out. Um, <laughs> yeah, these put you right on the spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stop, uh, um, living the American dream. There you go. In the there popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? <laughs> Sloppy seconds no, no. suck. No, I'll take first. I'll leave the, uh, the other person. I'll leave that, that sweat sucks. <laughs> if you could have dinner with one celebrity, who would it be? Dead or alive? Dead, sure. or, alive. Dead or alive. Frank Sinatra. Oh, oh yeah, good answer. Good call. Oh yeah, good. Call. That's the best one. Frankie Blue. No, I don't know. Val Kilmer was a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I've met a lot of celebrity in this industry. I've I've sat down next to Jay Z to play poker. John Travolta. Um, uh, we have a guy, um, Ian Ziering, who he's a big fan of our cigars. Uh, he was at the trade show. I don't know. You guys know Ian Ziering. He did. Uh, he was a nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, the oh, yeah, guy, right? yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, he did. I he did. Uh, I saw him there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he um, he, he did Shark a movie that went viral. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you. I've met Billy Joel. I've met a lot of stars, but I'm not starstruck. But uh, I mean, I wish I had the opportunity to see uh, Sinatra. I was a little younger, but I, I'm a huge, huge fan of him. Even bigger than the Beatles, and I love the Me Beatles. Too. But if it's one person, I would have to say, Old Blue Eyes. Right, Frankie Old Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes. Hey, the world went went wrong when he died. I tell you. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Eric, thank you so much for appearing on the Stogie and Geek Show. Thank you for the stick yes. and it's and a thank great, you so much for the cigars. Stick. I think in our next segment, uh, we'll tease it a little bit. Uh, Eric was kind enough to send uh, a five pack of uh, S. Bonoza cigars. We're going to do a little trivia question towards Eric. Yeah, we're going to do a little tri yeah. trivia question. We're going to do that in the next segment, though, so uh, we keep people engaged. We're going to give this away on tonight's show. Eric, again, thank you so much and for being here. Thank you for the t shirt and, er and everything you, you sent up. Oh, it's. 
I picked Not Harvard. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody did. Uh, that, big, that big Dayton also. We did it here on our website You, you here, picked so, Dayton? Uh, I don't know if I've lost the game yet, but uh, I picked Harvard and I picked Dayton. So. A good call on the Dayton. Yeah, that's that, – wow. I you, actually had you're, Ohio you're State the only one that game. picked Dayton. Yeah. I swear to you, I picked Dayton. I no had Ohio shit. State win in another game, too. You could be Making in that billion-dollar bracket, Bubba. <laughs> a bit. Yeah, if you – Yeah, I, I – yeah, that was uh, Warren Buffett, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good luck to make go unbeaten on that bracket. Yeah, it's, I never, think it's, it's mathematically it's impossible. That's it. Well, it's like one in nine quintillion, hmm. like that you could possibly yeah, win exactly. that. It's unbelievable. It truly is. Yeah. Well, well, I'll see you at the show, my friend. Yeah, you got it. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks Thank you, Eric. For, Always good talking to you, my friend. Ciao. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back with our next segment on the Stogies of the Week. <laughs> 